Howdy all, my name is Tony Paradis. I'm a licensed dietitian, personal trainer, and today I want to talk about practical programming. This is a guide for personal trainers that are kind of new to the industry and just need some help getting started with how to write an effective workout program for your clients. I really made this video because I see a big gap between the personal training certifications and what they teach versus what you can really implement and use in a real world setting. Uh, if you follow these guidelines, you're going to be able to have, number one, an effective programming tool, a way to stay better organized, and just be able to get better results for your clients, and have an idea of how a good program is made, and, and be able to progress from there, so you don't feel like you're just writing a new workout every time. I'm going to split up this... Uh, this lesson, this topic, into three videos. In part one, I'm going to talk about the basics, going over your client's needs, training splits, exercise selection, uh, creating a workout template, and then I'll sum that up. In part two, we're going to talk about fitness variables, so session time management, uh, some of the variables with sets, reps, and weights, rest, and uh, a little part called forced intensity. And finally, number three, periodization. We're going to talk about the different types of periodization and why they're not all just mutually exclusive and how to think about this in the long-term programming for your clients and, um, and being able to take that from there. So let's go ahead and get started with part one, y'all, the basics. So the first thing you want to do before you write any kind of program or think about any sort of exercise selection is your client's needs. So do they have any injuries? Uh, this is going to dictate what sort of exercises you can choose and the intensity that you can work at. Do you do an assessment? Now, not everybody does an assessment, and I'm kind of open to the idea of either doing like a loose assessment or um, just kind of getting a feel for what your clients want. And to talk a little bit more about this, I don't want to get too off track, but um, on one hand, you know, the way they teach you with the ACSM and doing an assessment is like, yeah, you have to do this like full assessment of your client to like test their strength, uh, you know, test their aerobic capacity and all that stuff. If you're a trainer and somebody is coming up to you, I mean, 90% of the time, there's somebody who has like been out of shape for like 10 years or there's like a complete couch potato. I mean, do you really need to do a full assessment? It's like, wow, you haven't worked out in 10 years. Uh, you have pitiful strength, uh, you couldn't even finish the workout, and you have no aerobic capacity. Did you really need to do a demoralizing assessment to figure that out? Um, but you still can do like some assessments. You can use this when you're doing a workout. Let's say you just want to say, okay, I want to see how many times you can do a bodyweight squat. Maybe make a note of that. Or give your client like an aerobic exercise, like see how fast they can move on the treadmill, and just sort of make a note of that. And as you become more and more experienced with training and seeing trends in people, you'll know what you know a good level of fitness is or a, or a bad level and be able to make some uh, guides from there. But in terms of bringing this back into like exercise selection, you know some things you could assess is like what are your clients needs as far as you know maybe they need more upper body strength, um, maybe they've been injured or they have back pain or something like that where you need to strengthen up muscles around that area so whether or not you do like a full kind of classical assessment or you piece it together or you just do observations of uh, kind of the initial phases of working with your client you'll be able to tell through that on how to write continuing uh, exercise programs so Let's just go ahead and move on from there, and hopefully I'll be able to tie that in uh, when we get to uh, further parts here in this in this lesson. Uh, client schedule. Okay, that's that's a really big one. So you can write the best workout program in the world, but your client may need like a super flexible schedule that you're just not accommodating to, or they're missing a lot of workouts. So uh, we'll we'll talk about that when we get into training splits. Uh, motivation. So, how motivated is your client? How long does the workout need to be? And you know what, guys, a lot of this is dictated by the kind of package that your client signed up for. So, if they only signed up for like a 30-minute, three times a week package, okay, that's going to dictate a lot with the schedule and how you're going to do the training and all of that sort of stuff too. So, uh, also feedback and observation. So, what is the client like? What do they not like? You know, you got to. They will not come back and train if training isn't fun. 
but they will also not come back if they're not getting results. So you're going to have to, you know, do your observation and find the correct balance uh, between the two. You know, you got to make them eat their vegetables, but you also got to give them some dessert. And that is something that, you know, had taken me a while to really find the balance of uh, through my years of training. I used to be just, you know, very strict, like you have to do these movements, these are the most effective. But you know what? Sometimes, you know, lady clients, they just want to do like an extra 10 minute of abs. And you may not see a need for that, but it's something that they really want to finish on. Or you may be working with a male client and wanting to do mostly compound movements, but you know what? You got to give this guy. Uh, you know, a time in the workout where he can just do some curls and, and work his chest. Okay, so those sorts of things are also going to be important. Anyways, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about training splits. So when I talk about a training split, I mean like how do you write the workout for when they come in? How do you split it up over the week? Uh, and I've written this into, you know, kind of a progressing format. The first thing I believe that everybody should start off with, every single new person. Now, this is geared toward, like, average people clients, okay? Like, if you have a professional athlete or something or training with you, uh, you're probably not even watching this video because you already know advanced training methods, okay? So let's assume that we have, like, a 40-year-old mom of three who's, 30 pounds overweight coming in. Okay, you're going to start this individual, and you may abs actually never move them to a higher training split, is full body. And the reason for this is because people miss training sessions. Regular people will skip, they will go on vacation, you know, their kids get sick or whatever. So if you have a full body training session, every time they come in, they're guaranteed to at least be stimulating all of their muscles. If you start riding, for example, like an upper lower routine, and somebody misses, you know, two lower workouts in a row, I mean, it's been 14 days since they had a lower body workout. And if you have that kind of inconsistency with somebody, I mean, that's really not something you're looking at, at being able to progress that client. So first and foremost, and I would say that 80% of people just stay here, is going to be a full body workout every time they come in. If you have somebody who has been training for a while, and maybe they're plateauing, and they're just really, really motivated, and you know they're the kind of person who will do this, or maybe they're training with you many times per week, you can do an upper-lower routine. Uh, then you can progress them to like a push-pull legs, meaning uh, an upper body, everything is pushing, everything is pulling, do a leg. Uh, you can also do like a body part split, so kind of more the traditional bodybuilding, chest and back, um, you know, shoulders and arms, or you could do chest and tries, back and buys. There's lots of different training splits. And you can also do a fusion split to... Uh, you know, sort of transition somebody from one to the other. So let's say you have a client who you have on full body splits and you want to see maybe how they adapt to an upper and lower split. You can do, for example, a mostly upper body with some lower body exercises to give them sort of an upper lower split, but it's still full body. And you can switch it around the next time that they come in so that they're not really missing uh, that lower body or upper body component, but they do have an emphasis for the workout. So that's something that you guys can consider too when you're doing a full body, trying to transition someone to an upper lower. But once again, to uh, sort of sum up with this, is that most people need to stay on a full body split. Uh, you know, they will absolutely never progress past that because of just motivation, needs, and whatever their goals are. I mean, uh, you are going to get those clients that just want to come in and kill it and just have that complete transformation. But the bulk amount of people, I mean, what they want is they want a fun training program. They want to be active. They don't want to have a heart attack next year. Um, they're not trying to, to build a ton of muscle or to be a bodybuilder. I mean, that would be nice, but they're not willing to put in that sort of effort. And, and a full body routine is something that's just guaranteed to give everybody that well-roundedness. So, uh, yes, I am biased for full body routines for, uh, you know, most normal people. Okay, let me wet my whistle here real quick. All right, exercise selection. So now that we've chosen our split, you know, let's assume we're doing a full body split, okay? We're going to 
now need to choose our exercises for this workout. The first thing you need to do is start with compound movements for all major muscle groups. And this includes an upper body vertical push and pull, an upper body horizontal push and pull, and a lower body push and pull. So examples of these would be an overhead press paired with a pull down. Okay, so that's your upper push and pull. Your upper body horizontal push and pull would be like a chest press and a row. Some sort of chest pressing movement, whether it be a bench press, a dumbbell press, a TRX uh, push up, a, um, a push up off the floor, a floor press, any sort of combination, you know, machine chest press, any sort of combination, not combination, but any sort of exercise selection for a horizontal push and then with a row, it could be a T-bar row, a dumbbell row, a barbell row, a cable row, uh, a TRX band row, a band row, any, a kettlebell row. It could be anything as long as it's a horizontal pull. Okay. Lower body push and pull, a squat and a deadlift. So anytime you write a full body workout, you, you want to make sure you're working all major muscle groups with a compound exercise. This absolutely has to happen. You cannot just have somebody come in and do 80% like isolation work. This, this is not right for the client. Some of the benefits of compound movements are, number one is time management, the biggest bang for your buck. You're, you're working three muscle groups out at the same time. Okay, for example, uh, you know, like a squat and deadlift, you're, you're working so many muscles at the same time. Uh, the other is that this is something that you can progress uh, more easily versus an isolation exercise. So it helps the client to get stronger and, and to move forward. And it burns more calories. You know, doing a squat, a heavy squat, burns more calories per minute than doing like a leg extension. Okay, so for, for those reasons and more, you have to do a compound movement for every major muscle group. And, and choose these first. Make sure that you, you, you just choose these exercises first before you go in. And then now you guys can see that we're going to fill in extra time or superset or something like that. We'll get into exercise variables in the next lesson. You're gonna, now you're going to choose your isolation, your core, your fun movements, balance, conditioning. You know, you can add in your curls, your tricep extensions, calves, uh, you know, inner and outer abduction and adduction for the thighs, uh, lateral raise, chest fly, those sorts of things. Core, ab movements, oblique movements, any sort of core exercise, ab exercise you can think of. Fun, you know, uh, whatever the client likes. Men typically like to do chest and biceps. Women typically like to do extra abs and glutes. Uh, balance. You know, now you can add in some balance ball variations. Maybe now you can add in some conditioning, some jump rope. And I also want to say uh, for exercises that are like two exercises paired together, these are always going to be considered um, conditioning exercises like a squat to press. You're holding a dumbbell, you squat down, and you press over your head. You're lay you know, because there's always going to be a muscle group in those exercises that are going to be able to do more so you're not really doing that to challenge the squat you know it may be hard to do the press component of that that may be the late the uh, muscle limiting uh, component of that but um, you want to look at these as kind of your conditioning and your compound movements are going to be more of your bread and butter so at least do one movement for all major muscle groups and whether or not you want to move through those fast, right? If you only want to do a couple sets of them, or you only want to... Oop, where am I getting, uh, getting ahead here? Okay, you know, whether you only want to do a couple sets of them, or you really want to decrease rest time, um, I still insist that you do compound movements for all major muscle groups, and then, you know, do the extra stuff. Do the fun stuff. Do the isolation stuff. I'm not saying that this stuff doesn't work, but they don't work as good if you're not doing the compound movements. I really feel like I'm beating a dead horse here, so I'm going to move on. Um, exercise selection. I want you to start with lower skill movements and move to a higher skill movement. Now, this is, you know, understanding the skill of a movement comes with time and, uh, you know, just, just experience as a trainer. But, 
you can sort of intuitively tell you know what's going to be easier and what's going to be harder as as you do this longer uh, this is especially true in older clients while you may have like an 18 year old client that you can teach how to barbell squat right away with you know a couple lessons and they got the great range of motion it's going to be a lot different for somebody that has uh, you know just inferior biomechanics uh, sorry poor biomechanics and uh, you know an older client who hasn't been exercising in 10 years so let's say you have a goal of weighted barbell squats trying to move up to a big compound movement uh, you can start them off with goblet box squats because a they're not going to know the depth they need to squat down to and b uh, you just got to give them a dumbbell or have them do body weight because they're a beginner. They're not going to be able to put a barbell on their back. A lot of people are intimidated by this as well. So you got to move them up through their their skill level and their uh, their mental toughness as well. A barbell box squat. Uh, so now you have a barbell on their back and you, you uh, have them squat down on the box. And then uh, maybe after a while you can have them do just a barbell squat and for some people you may never be able to have them do a barbell squat um, in the first for example like six months of training because their biomechanics are so messed up you may have to do adaptive exercises and get tougher and tougher with those working around injuries um, range of motion stuff like that uh, considerations for body weight movements in exercise selection so this is obvious, but think about it. The heavier a client is, the harder a body weight, the harder body weight movements are. So if your client is 100 pounds overweight, you really need to think twice about having that person doing a lunge or doing a push-up or how are you going to modify this exercise for this individual. And then also considerations for mixed group training. So if you have a mixed group, now I'm not saying like you have all advanced people coming in or all beginners come in. I mean they're all going to be on the same page but if you're trying to make money as a trainer and you have people coming in you may need to pair a couple of low skill with intermediate skill with advanced skill people to make you know your session work or maybe that's the only time that they can train so you either need to choose all low skill exercises and also with consideration of body weight movement so you know client A may be able to do the set of 20 lunges that you prescribe but client B is 300 pounds and can do not even one lunge so those are some things you need to consider um, and you can also have an A or a B option so when I talked about you know exercise progression here you may need to like have a station and you're like okay beginners are gonna do the goblet squats uh, my advanced guys are gonna load up and do barbell squats okay so those are some considerations for mixed group training. So when you're choosing exercise selection here, you need to be able to choose uh, the right thing for the right client. Okay, so let's let's move on. So I want to talk about um, our workout template and using a spreadsheet uh, for doing that. And I'm actually going to show you on my docs program. Okay. So here we have a full body workout and you can do this on a spreadsheet, you can do it any way you want. I, I really like spreadsheets because um, it's something that makes a good template and it's easy for you to, to print off and see as a trainer. You're going to write out your exercise, your sets, your rep range, and then you have what they did for set one, two, three, and so on and so forth so you can record the weight if that's um, something that you're doing and you can make notes you can also put the date and the weight you know what they're doing there as well too uh, you can write different workouts on the same page this is just a template okay so I wanted to give you guys an overview of that so as far as exercise selection okay so I've told you about why we need to choose compound movements first well there's a great website called EXRX and I want to take you guys here real quick and this is just a great website that's I might be running a little slow because of my um, I'm recording the screen here so hopefully this will pull up in a uh, decent amount of time okay it looks like uh, the program here is just giving me shit so that's great okay good web page not available right in the middle of, of the uh, video well you know we can't plan on everything alright so we might we might be SOL with that 
let's go ahead and um, do our full body workout, okay? So remember, we want an upper body push, pull, uh, vertical push, and pull horizontal, and then we want to do a push, pull, uh, lower body. Okay, you don't have to do it in that order, but you know this is what we need. So for our upper body, let's say horizontal push and pull. Well, we're going to choose our exercises, so we might do a bench press. Okay, for our pull, um, I might want to do a dumbbell row. For my push and pull uh, vertical, I might want to do a dumbbell shoulder press. And for my pull, let's do a lat pull down or a pull-up or something like that. For my push, let's say this person has a... Um, why can I not load this? Right here. Okay, so for my uh, upper body push, I might, this person might have a, you know, issues with their hips where they can't, you know, squat down all the way. I might have them do like a step up. And for the pull, maybe uh, they're not ready for Romanian deadlifts yet, so I might have them do a lying leg curl. Okay, so there we go. That that actually, um, lying leg curl, that's more of an isolation exercise, so let's choose something that gives us a little bit more bang for our buck. And we can do, um, let's go ahead and do like a straight leg deadlift. And we'll do single leg because they weren't ready for like heavy Romanian deadlifts. Okay, so that can be our compound exercises for... Uh, the full body routine there. And now what we can go in is we can go ahead and add in some of the abs, some of the core, maybe some of the fun stuff. So let's say maybe this is a, a, a female client and maybe I want to do um, like a glute bridge um, and maybe like a lying leg raise and a plank for abs. Okay, so there I've written the program, I have mostly uh, full body, uh, sorry, compound exercises uh, chosen here with a couple of fun isolation exercises there as well. Now you can even add more isolation exercises if you want, if you're, if you have longer time with a client, if you're supersetting, if you are um, doing active rest or something like that, uh, you can also write that off to the side. We'll go over this more later. Okay, there we go. Oh, yay! EXRX has pulled up for me. Okay, so we can go to the weight training page here. And what we'll have is a light, an exercise library. Oh, I guess it has it here too. Let's just go ahead and click here and see what pulls up. Okay, so here's our exercise and muscle directory. And so when you guys are picking exercises, uh, for muscle groups, let's say we have back, we want to choose our back exercises. Um, you, can, you can go here and you can see the different exercise selections. So you can see what would be um, a good exercise to choose there. This is just a good little library for reference. So maybe here I want to do a bent over row. Man, this is just giving me grief. Am I going to have to reshoot this whole video? I'm going to... Sh okay. About ready to go ape here. Blood pressure rising. I'm getting angrier. Don't do this to me. Okay, well, I don't know what to tell you. I have a shitty computer. Fuck me. All right, well, I guess I'll just tell you about it. I mean, what the fuck? I'm already disappointed at this part, at this point. Um, it should give you a, um exercise demonstration here. Granted, you don't live out in the boonies and have a shitty internet connection. Um... It'll give you a demonstration, it'll tell you the target and the synergists, everything that you want to work here. I mean, more information than you need to know. And hey, look, it's a compound movement, so we know that might be 
good exercise for there. So you can go ahead and plug that into your workout to be able to make your selections from there. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and let's wrap up. Let's see how we do this. Present. Do I got to start over? Summary. Okay, so I just showed you guys how to write a workout template and how to use the EXRX kind of on that. All right, but any, anyways, here's the summary. Uh, number one is consider the client's needs. You know, what are you going to be able to do with this client? Choose an appropriate split. Remember, most people need a a, um, a full body workout, and then put them uh, put thought into your exercise selection. So mostly compound movements. Add in some of the fun stuff. You can even ask the client. You know, what do you want to work on? What do you want to do a little bit more of? And then create a template to track progress and also to create value. You know, it really shows you as putting thought into the workout and having a plan for the client. You can also give them the workout template so they can do it on their own, so they can get more results by the next time they see you. All right, guys, next up, we're going to talk about fitness variables in uh, part two of this video series. So go ahead and uh, flip on over to that, and we'll go over that in detail. Thanks.